All right, let's talk about one of my favorite chips, uh, at least small ones. Arduino is probably my favorite, but uh, this is a great one. It is the L29 3D motor driver chip. It uh, is set up so you can control two motors with it using something that's not so good at providing power. Um, no. So here is our chip pinout diagram. Now a pinout diagram says, hey, what do each of these little legs of this uh, chip do? Now, one thing you wanna make sure you don't do is don't put it in backwards. Now there's a really easy way to tell if you're putting it in the right way. Uh, if you notice in the diagram, you've got a little notch here. That There is an actual notch in the physical chip and this is common for uh, pretty much every single chip that looks remotely like this. It'll have a little notch or dot or or something that says uh, which way is which. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but it's right there. Uh, yeah, so look for the notch. Make sure you put it in the right way. Now, first thing we might want to do with this chip is provide it some power. So notice we got a, a few options. We have four heat sinks slash grounds, pins uh, four, five, 12, and 13. These, any of these can be connected to ground and they're all connected together. Um, with this chip, you're gonna have two power supplies to it. You're gonna have the five volts um, from the Arduino uh, powering the internal logic of the circuit. Uh, plus you'll have, uh, in our case, we'll have nine volts, but you can have anywhere from See, what is it? It's like 4.5 to 36. Yeah, 4.5 to 36 uh, uh, volts that this can handle. So if you want a beefier robot, this can take it uh, with some heat sinking. Um, you just clamp those to something big that can dissipate a lot of heat if you're using 36. Uh, anyway, so uh, we can connect any of those four pins to either the... Uh, ground side of your battery pack or uh, one of the ground connections for your Arduino. They're actually all connected together behind the scenes. It might be a little tricky to figure it out, but all of those will be at the same voltage level and uh, that'll work just fine. Actually, uh, for this thing, it may make sense to connect it because uh, we got two separate power supplies. We're not powering the Arduino by battery. Uh, so for this purposes, if you're not powering your Arduino by battery, connect uh, one of the ground pins of your Arduino, uh, probably through one of the, the rails in your breadboard, to uh, one of the ground pins, one of our four options, and also connect uh, the negative side of your battery pack uh, to one of those ground pins, probably through a rail. Uh, those long things on the side of your breadboard. Long rows. All right, uh, so let's talk about the other pins. So this guy, VCC1, right beside our dot, or our, our notch, this guy uh, powers the internal circuitry. So it does not need a lot of power. It needs exactly five volts. So connect it to the power supply for your Arduino and all will be well. The internal logic of the circuit will be powered by that and it won't blow it up, which can happen. And notice if you put it in backwards, that would be bad because you'd be switching VCC1 and VCC2, which this guy is the voltage you wanna to connect to your motors. Uh, so that's the one that gets used to power your motors. And this guy in our case, uh, will be 9 volts, though it can handle more than that if you need. All right, so that'll power it. So now it's got power. Now we just got to deal with these A's and Y's. Now, first thing to consider with this thing is that um, these enable things. So we have two enables, one on each side. And each side of this chip here is designed to control one DC motor. So the whole thing together can handle two DC motors, but each side is kind of separate 
and design for one. So this enable thing does kind of what you'd think with an enable. It turns that motor on or off. So if this is five volts, then the motor could be on. If it's zero volts, it definitely isn't. Um, and it's same for the whole side. So this guy controls all of the left side, uh, whereas the um, um, three, four enable controls the entire right side. So we're actually gonna use uh, analog write and pulse width modulation. By varying the duty cycle to the enable, we'll be able to control the power to our motor so it doesn't burn out. Because uh, our motor is meant for like the three to six volt range. It is not meant for nine volts, which is what we're providing. Uh, so by reducing the duty cycle to 180 or something, um, we shouldn't burn it out. And it'll still give it a good amount of power. Now we just got these A's and Y's to figure out. Basically, an A controls a Y. So this guy goes to the Arduino. A's to Arduino. And the Y's connect to either side of the motor. So you got a motor like this. My beautiful, beautiful diagram. So if the 1A thing is at 5 volts, so if it's at 5 volts, the 1Y pin is at 9 volts. If the 2A is at 0 volts, then the 2Y pin is at 0 volts. This is good, right? The way we have it now, we've got one side 0 volts and one side 9 volts. There is a difference in voltage levels on either side of the motor, so current will flow uh, through it in one direction and make the motor turn in one direction. Uh, if we want to make it turn in the other direction, we'd switch uh, which A pin we were digital writing um, high to. So if we're putting out, and which one we're doing low. So if we digital wrote uh, this pin, this 1A to low, zero volts, that means uh, this side would go to zero volts. And if we digital wrote high to 2A, uh, that would set it to five volts there, which would mean our motor driver chip would make 2Y at nine volts. And that would make current flow through it in the other direction. If uh, current's flowing through it in the other direction, uh, just like we saw in the last video, the motor will turn in the other way. Uh, so by uh, setting one, digital writing one of these A's to high and the other to low, um, and switching which one's high and which one's low, that's how we're gonna control direction. And remember, we're gonna control power with our enable pin uh, by analog writing to it using our pulse width modulation. So we'll pick a pulse width modulation capable pin, uh, connect it to our enable, and then by analog writing to it, uh, say around 180, uh, that will keep the motor from burning out but still put out a good amount of power. And we can vary that power uh, depending on what our purpose is. So that is how it works. And uh, keep in mind it's entirely symmetrical, uh, so we could go through exactly the same thing on the other side. But for this uh, particular project, we'll only be controlling one motor. Uh, but this is the chip we will be using for our robot uh, to control the motors. So keep in mind, you're gonna need this stuff. Thanks for watching.